So I'm at the point of doing some of the fine detail and getting into the top and kind of getting the towers really locked in and the shelves and everything really tightened up and secured. Before I do that, I want to make sure that I've got the bed frame itself connected because until now I've been using clamps to hold it together. Uh, so what I'm doing to actually assemble this thing is I'm using just regular lag bolts uh, with a washer and I'm using pronged T-nuts. And the way these work, uh, you essentially drill a half inch hole through the bed after you've got your pieces all aligned. And this piece goes on from the back and then when the screw threads in, it actually pulls this tight into the wood with these little prongs and you get a nice tight connection without having to have a nut on one side and a bolt on the other. Because this is very difficult to do. In my son's bed, I did traditional nuts and bolts and it was this weird kind of balancing act of having a ratchet on one side and a wrench on the other and trying to hold it while you were tightening it. With these, once the T-nuts are installed, you just have to be on one side with the ratchet and tighten everything up. And then when you take the T-nuts or you take the bolts out, the T-nuts stay where they are. So you can quickly put it back together. So on the front side, because I have three layers of wood to go through, I'm using a two inch bolt. On the back, I'm going to be using just a one inch. And in order to do this, what you're going to do is recess a hole so that the hardware is all uh, flush and flat when it's all tightened up. And we're gonna use two different drill bits to do that. The two drill bits I'm gonna use for this is a 7 8 inch Forstner bit and then a half inch spade bit. So essentially, first I'm gonna drill a hole with this and I'm only gonna to go to the depth of the kind of the cup here, which is about half the thickness of my 3 quarter inch uh, piece of material. And then this leaves a nice kind of little point so I know where the exact center of that hole is. I'll line up my spade bit into that point and then proceed to complete the half inch hole all the way through. I've already done this on the front of the bed. So this is looking from the back side. Those are the T-nuts uh, that you can see coming through. And if I walk around, I have my actual bolts then recessed and nice and flush when it's all said and done. So our sides are connected, everything is nice and tight. Let's talk about the top. Uh, for the top of this, I'm using a half inch piece of MDF. I've already cut the angles for my towers so that they sit nice and secure. Basically, this is gonna get screwed all the way around the side, and that might be strong enough uh, to allow the kids to be up there, but my kids tend to jump around a bit. So to support this, I'm gonna build a little bit of a substructure underneath it. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is I'm gonna run a stringer board down here about three quarters of an inch down and then I'm gonna run one by threes across the width of it. That's just gonna give it some extra stability against that bounce and everything else just to uh, reinforce this material a little bit. You could probably go with a three quarter inch top and not have to worry so much about that structure but I mean when it comes to my kids I'd rather be too safe uh, as opposed to sorry later if it fails and breaks I'd feel horrible about that since I built it. Um, one thing as a note as well if you've learned anything from these videos, uh, these round columns, they look awesome. And I think they're gonna work out really well. I've got some trim that's gonna go down the side, clean them up, they'll look really nice. But they are a pain in the butt to do. They're hard to secure, they're hard to get the angles right. Uh, if you're looking to do this simply, my suggestion would be to square off the columns. So just build a box, it'd be a lot easier for you. Um, if you are following my plans and you're using round columns, you should be able to just run the arc here to figure out what your overhang is. Mine, because I didn't account for this little three quarter inch piece, they're offset. So what I ended up doing is taking one of the extension pieces of the column and actually laying it on those points and then using it to draw that outline edge. Uh, that worked okay. It's just a little bit more convoluted. So I'm gonna take this top off and then we will, um, I'll show you what I'm doing as far as the supports, just like we just described. Uh, with my supports, I'm going to double stack the support on the front. That has less to do with the actual functional nature of the support and much more to do with lighting. Um, I'm doing this so I have a little light channel that I can run an LED strip down. So I'll get the top off, we'll get the supports on, uh, and check in in a minute. So as stated, I have my 1x3 run along the side. I measured down 3 quarters of an inch. That way when my stringers go on, they'll be able to sit and get screwed in and be level with the top edge of the platform. And these will run across to the opposite side. Um, I am going to double stack this, like I mentioned. So there'll be a one by four that goes on here as well. It sits down about like that, uh, kind of hanging down the bottom. And then I'm gonna run an LED strip 
on the underside of this board. So you won't be able to see it, but when it's turned on, the glow from it will come down along the inside of this panel. Uh, it's all just part of the embellishments I'm doing for my daughter because she wanted pink lights and there you go. So uh, this piece is glued as well as screwed into this board. So you wanna make sure these are as stable as possible because uh, they will bear a fair amount of the weight if that top starts to bounce. So you don't want any of this creaking or moving um, just to give you that nice secure kind of end result that we're looking for. So I'm gonna get a one by four cut to the same size as this. This is about 68 and five eighths inch. Uh, I'm running from the inside edge of the tower to the inside edge of the tower. And the main reason I'm doing that is because of my pocket holes, which will eventually be used to secure the tower uh, to the base. So if I ran all the way across, I wouldn't be able to get access to those and it's not gonna be ideal. So um, aesthetically, I'd prefer if it went all the way across, but you know what, it'll be good enough. So I'm gonna get the one by four on here. We'll get that placed, do the one by three on the other side, start cutting my stringers, and then main structure is gonna be pretty much done. So stringers attached and sideboards placed. This is the end really of our structure. Uh, each of these one by threes will get uh, pre-drilled and screwed. It'll pull everything nice and tight and square. And then the lid go, will go on top and get screwed around the side. I'm not gonna do that step right now because I have some further embellishments just because I'm crazy uh, that I'd like to do for this to kind of customize it for my daughter. But that does wrap up the structure of this build. Uh, not too difficult, really, from a, a core standpoint. As I said before, if you want to simplify this, do square columns instead of round. Possibly get rid of the little shelves on the inside. Those were the fiddly bits. The rest of the structure, honestly, you could put together in a day. Uh, it really wasn't that bad at all. Well, that's going to end us from our messy garage here. I'm going to get these screwed together and do some of the painting and finishing work. I've got a uh, pink carpet that's going to go on this and some of those things. I'll do a little video just showing some of the embellishments and kind of lighting that I'm doing, but really the treatment around the top and the sides, just have fun with it, customize it, make it look the way you want to, to stylize this uh, for your own space. So that being said, we'll end as always with a dad joke. So which days of the week are the strongest? That's well, obviously Saturday and Sunday. The rest are just weekdays. Take care. We'll see you next time. So minor possible issue uh, looking at painting these and as I started putting a really thin coat on instantly the paper started to bubble as it got wet. So it does look like as it dries it starts to settle back down but you can still kind of see that texture. So I'm going to let these dry fully, wait till like the wet lines on the inside are gone and see if the paper relaxes back tight. Uh, if it does then I'll just go in real thin coats until I'm painting on top of paint and it shouldn't be a problem anymore. Uh, if not. I'm gonna have to find some like paintable textured paper that I can wrap these columns in. So as you can see, after they do dry, the paper does tighten up again. Um, you do need to go very slow with this. So just lots of thin coats of paint um, on the tubes and you're gonna be just fine. They ends up with actually a pretty nice smooth finish, uh, but it does take it quite a while to dry down and tighten up. The corners did loosen a little bit, so I'm gonna have to just tack that down. Uh, but the rest of it is pretty much exactly what I was looking for just off of these paper tubes.